Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. Uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. Nope, we'd like to thank you for connecting. Um, <laughs> I actually looked that up. <laughs> You're laughing at me. Um, oh, I being the you. geek I am, I thought tuning in, that's what people said on TV when mm -hmm. they do the news. We'd like to thank you for tuning in, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I remember as a kid thinking, yeah, they, you got to use the dial and yeah. you get your antenna. And, yeah. <laughs> And I thought about it, I thought, we don't tune anything anymore. No, so huh. what do people say? So I Googled it, and it actually says connecting is the proper expression because you connect with the Wi-Fi and with the Internet oh, and with the router. And so I thought, okay, so we're connecting. Yeah. Thank you for connecting. <laughs> yeah, um, we're connected. Yeah. All right. But a, a warning to all viewers, um, <laughs> we do use viewers' names and subscribers' names and floss tubers' names. <laughs> And so if you have a tendency to jump if you hear your name called, uh, be careful what you're holding because Valerie said she almost stabbed herself while Aww. she was stitching <laughs> when she heard her name last week. So we're glad you were happy about it, Valerie. Glad you're okay. But let's not draw any blood. Yeah, please. <laughs> Deb faints. We don't want her to hit the floor. I do. She was actually witness to it. <laughs> I was. Oh, man. It took a while to recover, too. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. And it was my blood. Yes. <laughs> funny i forgot that was about not that. funny <laughs> well it hurt a little do not hurt yourself in front of me yeah that was not funny gosh oh man oh, we should she's the one hurting i'm the one on the floor and she's taking care of me <laughs> it was comical maybe funny is not the right word it was comical oh my gosh okay well we have some comments and questions but real quick i wanted to say something um i received this in the mail the um latest punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine and well, I almost didn't receive it because I didn't realize I let my subscription lapse. And I love this magazine. Ew. So thankfully, I was able to renew and, and I got it. So I had time Saturday to finally sit down and read through it. And I was so tickled when we got to the back and they have a section um, for floss tube channels. And Liz and I are listed there. That was so nice. They also talk about that they may have an upcoming floss tube channel. Yes. That's really cool. I saw that. That's really cool. And so anyway... Check out the names there. If there's anybody you're not watching, you know, check them out. And I think they'll continue to mm -hmm. highlight people, which is which is really neat. Yep. And uh, Marlene, who is stitching by the lake, I was watching one of her last videos, and oh my gosh, she holds up this quilt that she made. It is like hand applique, all by hand, all hand cut, pieced. It is gorgeous. Wow. It's one of the prettiest things I have ever ever seen. I'll have to take a look. It is gorgeous. It's pause worthy. You pause. <laughs> Whatever you're watching, you know, on your TV or your phone, you hit pause because uh -huh. <laughs> you just got to stare at it. It's beautiful. Wow. But that was cool. And that is it, fun. um, like, did she say, is it to be used as a bed quilt, a wall quilt? Well, I mean, it's pretty large. She held it up and, um, it's, I don't know what she'll do. I wonder if she'll use it to cover up or she'll hang it like on the wall from one of those quilt racks. I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know. Curious. Yeah, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> yeah. All um, right. Any comments? Sure. Yeah. Um, we have had um, a common theme, and I just wanted to make a note of it. Over the last year, there are a lot of people moving back into stitching. Mm-hmm. And some of them were gone 25 plus years. Yeah. So Floss Tube is doing a good job. Yeah. I'm really so cool. excited by it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people who used to stitch, who set it aside, and some people are still doing other crafts now, but they've brought stitching back yeah. into their into their fold of what they do. Yeah. I thought that was really that neat. That is exciting. Yeah. That is really cool. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I have a comment from Debbie. She wants to know if Salt Yarns has a website that you can order from. Yes, they do. Um, you could also, if you have something specific in mind, just give them a call because those ladies know exactly what's there and where it is. They do. So that's pretty cool. And it's, it's sometimes, um, you'll get more information if they have an idea about something that you don't have too, or that if they don't have what you want, but they have something that's an alternative, if it's a gadget or a, yeah. or a floss or something like that. So, um, call and, and chat with them. Mm -hmm. And their phone number and website address are usually in our drop down box when we've had anything mentioned in the mm -hmm. video. So um, mm -hmm. I'll make sure that we have that in there for you today, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, lots of you, just for uh, my, more like people's point of view, really, you 
you let us know about how you like to finish your edges of fabric. We had that discussion. Serger discussion. Yeah. 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 Um, and a lot of you, well, there's just different ideas. Um, zigzag stitch, whip stitch, buttonhole stitch, some serge, um, a, a fray block is what it's called. And she bought it at Joann's, I think. It was just another version of the other one that we showed. Yeah. Um, so lots of different ways to finish your, your fabric if you don't like the, the threads. Raw edges. Or, yeah. yeah. That yeah. came from a woman who had ordered a piece from um, a was website, it? and it came surged, and she ordered another piece of fabric, and it didn't, and she was wondering, what do people do if it's not surged? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so Deb and I were thinking, well, there are lots of ways to stitch it with a needle and thread, but yeah. fray check and fray, right. fray stop were some that we were familiar with, and then a lot of people shared how they use mm -hmm. uh, different things. I often will pull a piece of linen out of the fabric up towards the top and use that to actually close the edges off. Um, then I don't have to worry about using my floss or running for my sewing thread or okay. anything like that. I just use what's there. <laughs> and, it, and I actually have a serger, but it's not even threaded. <laughs> yeah, mine's not either. You gave me my serger and that I haven't would, threaded. That would, that would help I if it was threaded. I did learn huh? how, though. Oh, I well did. then. I haven't told you about it. Well, but why I, is mine not threaded then? <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. I'll tell you. We haven't discussed the price yet. That's why it hasn't been done. <laughs> Cha-ching. <laughs> All right. You can just shop in my room here. How's that? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, I had a question about the app that I said I used. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is an app you can buy. It's called Suzy's Stitches. S-U-Z-Y apostrophe S. Stitches. That's like one of those tongue twisters. Yeah. Um, you can also buy that in a bound format. I have a copy of that same publication, but it's in like a book. Hmm. Um, remember, didn't I is get that you that you one uh... that flips it's like an index card thing no but i saw yours uh-uh yeah oops no. <laughs> that's not i stick things in my head all the time <laughs> deb needs one deb needs one sometimes i hit it and i remember sometimes it just well, rolls around up out there your craft room now so who knows what she's <laughs> gonna find true. that's true i yeah. found scissors i bought for her all, yeah you just you never know <laughs> it's like christmas in there for deb <laughs> i just don't know it yeah, that's right <laughs> you're blind um, so Susie <laughs> stitches and I got that right out of the app store oh, cool. on my iPhone. Nice. Um, I had a couple questions. Uh, Vanessa, Laura wanted to know behind me, the spindle on my counter that way, um, wanted to know where I got it or did, did we make it? Um, they had one down at Salty Yarns. That's when I first saw the idea. Uh, so I took a picture of it <laughs> and brought it home. Anything that I see that's made of wood, I usually just try to ask Matt if he'll if he'll make something. So he did. He he made that one for me, and he made one for Liz. Yep. So they do have some. I'll call them trees, that have different lengths and different shaped wrought iron type pieces uh, at Joann's. Remember that littler one that I have? Yeah. But they don't hold the longer, heavier pieces. They're more for little itty bitty smalls. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think they had some larger ones, but I haven't picked up any of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Linda asked me about that uh, Jardin Preview piece, um, which mm -hmm. is the band sampler that has all the little uh, needlework. Um, it's like an alphabet, but Words, it's not. Teeth, it's like everything yeah. that you find in a needleworker's craft room yeah, or something. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and I will put a link in the drop down box, but that I bought at Salty Yarns and mm -hmm. the banding I bought there at Salty Yarns. Mm -hmm. um, I think the tag on it just said banding, but they would know because everybody was getting that similar banding. It has that banding. pretty edge. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's really pretty. Um, and a couple people, uh, Colleen, Debbie, Cynthia, wanted to know where I got my thread organizers that I showed when I had um, spent two hours <laughs> so, <laughs> separating the packages. Of uh, threads for the um... common thread. Thank you for that one. Welcome. Yeah, uh, I held these up and I didn't even think to say anything about them, but these are from these were just freebies in the cross stitcher, the overseas magazine. Uh, so the British magazine. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Those are fun magazines. Yes. And they have Definitely. giveaways in almost well all of those, and then World of Cross Stitch. Yeah. Um, 
is yeah. another one they put and out. And you can, you know, write, write on there and just erase it off then and reuse them. So it yep. worked out perfect for this project because it's exactly the number of, <laughs> isn't that weird? Yeah. Exact number of spaces I need. And there were three packs of threads that you had to separate. So I just kept, you know, the packs together on their own card. Cool. So, yes. All right. Lucky, lucky. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Fun when things work out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much the way we, we do it. <laughs> what will work out today? You have anything else you want to say? Um, not for my emails. No. Nope. No. Okay. Um, well I thought, okay. We were asked how many whips we have. Uh, Lee, Lee was wondering how many whips we have. It's kind of a personal question. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's your age? <laughs> If I do, tell, do I hair? have to stop purchasing things? <laughs> How yeah. high does the number have to be when I get cut off? <laughs> you are cut off, girlfriend. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't know how many I have. I mean, I, I think I've shown everything. But that does raise a, an issue. Keep watching because <laughs> we're going to do something. Put a little twist on whips today. Um, <laughs> She's funny. She said she has seven and she feels naughty. I oh. saw that. I oh, thought, my. oh, wow. If I could only get to seven. And I have. Um, That's awesome. I have whips that I consider current whips, mm -hmm. but then I have whips that aren't <laughs> current whips, and I don't consider them whips. That keeps the number lower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Then, then you know, it feels bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Teal, she was wondering, um, I was talking about Hank out there in the field, and she wanted to know uh, how many cattle I have, because she grew up on a Hereford cattle ranch. That's awesome. We don't have any Herefords. They are really sweet cows, though. Um, we have Hank, who is a, a red Holstein, and then we have Black Angus, and then we have some Black Angus and um, Semmental mix. We only have four right now. Um, we're actually going to be getting um, a heifer, and um, we're going to breed her. And then we have a couple more in the works because my son shows the steer. Uh, so... We, we don't have a lot, but... When I was about but 10, enough. I got invited to a classmate's um, ranch in Arizona, up in the foothills. And they were doing Labrador training. They were training the labs to retrieve oh. the ducks. So they had a lot of um, birds that they were releasing, and they were uh, shooting, and then the labs were retrieving them mm -hmm. on, in the lake. Mm -hmm. And I was just fascinated. But to get there, we kept going... Through, it was just way, 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 way back in the foothills. I'll bet we drove for an almost two hours in this mountain mm -hmm. mountain pass. And every now and then Juan would say, this is my grandfather's field over here. And, I, oh, so I'm thinking field, you know, sizable boundaries, everything. And then he'd mm -hmm. say, and, and I'd say, and, and whose is that? That's my grandfather's field over there. And... <laughs> And two hours later, we're still in his grandfather's field. <laughs> Is he and, in the whole state? <laughs> yeah, and we're at the, the show or at the training session. And so I said, because I saw the cows, I said, how many cows does your grandfather have? And it got really quiet in the car. And Juan's mom said, well, that's kind of like one of those questions if you ask somebody how much money they have in the bank. She said, you don't usually ask people how many head really? of cattle they have. That's what she told me, how many head of cattle they have on their ranch. So I guess that's something that, that they know that they don't necessarily hmm. talk about. Now, that was a long time ago. Wow. And it may have just been she was tired of me asking questions. Well, she didn't know the answer. <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe that was it, too. But I remember thinking to myself, okay, I won't ever ask anybody how many cows they have again. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Mercy. Uh, no, but that was cute, um, Teal, asking that. And she, she loves cows, too, so... I do too. I think they're my favorite farm animal. Really? I do. I mean, I love my chickens, but I was going to say, you spend a lot of time with the chickens. I know. I know. They're so cute too. But I don't know. They're just, they're so cute. But I wasn't very fond of them the other day because the fence wasn't working and <laughs> Baxter got out and, and then... I got a text. Duke got I hadn't heard from her all afternoon. The texts were coming in in the morning. We were swapping. Then it got real quiet. And I thought, oh, she's stitching like crazy right now. And I'm not going to text her. And she's going to put me to shame on Thursday. <laughs> and then I get a text that said, 
had this little unhappy, angry face, and it said <laughs> Baxter got out. <laughs> Spent two hours in the meadow trying to catch him. <laughs> yes, he, and he's not one that's halter broken, so he is, and he is stubborn. And of course, well, let me tell and you he's this. Big. He's huge. He's our one of our Black Angus. He's huge. But I had just sat down to stitch. It was 2.30 in the afternoon, just sat down to stitch. And I hear Hank mooing. And Hank doesn't moo unless he sees <laughs> Logan or he is hungry. Neither one of those should have been happening at that time. So I thought, what is his problem? <laughs> and I, you can always tell if it's Hank because he has the strangest moo. <sighs> and so I thought, oh, crap, I forgot to take care of the chickens. So let me go out and do that real quick. So I went out to the chicken coop and cleaned it, got the eggs, and I'm coming out of the coop. And I closed the door, and I just see something or feel something. I don't know what it was, but I turned my head. There's Baxter right there. <laughs> and I thought, oh, crap. So he was right near you. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was interested in the chickens, too. Oh. Yeah, and then he got himself tangled up in the pine trees, and oh, it was a mess. <laughs> so I wanted to push him towards you know, the back pasture, got some green, all kinds of stuff. And he was just stubborn. Wasn't taking it. And it was 2.30. So yeah. I had a whole hour. I had to wait until Logan was getting home from school because I couldn't get him in myself. Yeah. You know, so finally at 3.30, Logan and McKenna come and McKenna goes down to the gate and Logan's on one side and I'm on the other side. And we finally push him far enough down to where the barn is and where the gate, one of the gates is. And yep. <laughs> Logan goes, mom, now, I'm going to push him from the back. He's going to come to you. I don't want him. So, yeah. So just don't let him pass you. I'm thinking, what? Seriously? You see this profile? <laughs> if anybody would have been videoing, because I look like a mad woman, flaring my arms. I mean, everything. But, And he was stubborn. He didn't go in the first time. And finally he got in there. But we had to read we had to i don't know what happened to it's a solar fence i don't know what happened to the panel i'm not sure what happened but it wasn't working and of course baxter's going to help himself out again and he was he was on his way to help himself out again later you know about an hour later matt was running to wherever he needed because we were gonna we were gonna electrify it just get it done well i had to babysit the field again because <laughs> baxter was trying to help himself oh. out and now duke duke was halfway out because wow. he was like let me let me do this now so follow the leader oh it's just such a pain yeah you know it happened pain. what was it last spring we were going on our retreat yeah and oh, yeah like two, two times i'd been over and both times i'd been over in the recent period yeah the, the cows had gotten yeah out. i thought it was liz's fault <laughs> yeah she did she said you can't come anymore because every time you're here they're out and um and one uh. day it was really muddy. That, but that was, was all human error. Yeah, that was true. This is, you know, when the fence... Technical failure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other ones were, Logan, you're in trouble. You forgot to shut the gate or something. But, oh my goodness. So, no, I sat down the stitch and never got to it. Yeah. Mm -mm. Nope. Oops. Yes. <laughs> yep, do, yep, yep. Do you remember last week when um, somebody was mentioning something that triggered you to think about baby samplers? You were talking about when you didn't stitch any baby samples. Yeah. And I mentioned what I had stitched um, for the nursery. Yeah. I brought some. These were, I, this isn't the sampler. Mom stitched the sampler. Mm -hmm. But this is what she stitched for the room. <laughs> and That's I'd like so you to cute. notice the advanced level of framing. <laughs> uh, That's cute. I started stitching that year. You and didn't so, date it? no, she didn't. Um, this was 85, though, because it was, was the it? year okay. Carrie was born. Okay. And it was funny because I I picked out the pattern, mm -hmm. and we stitched all of these from the same pattern book. Aww. But Mom was in South Korea. So I mailed her the page that Aww. had this one, and she stitched this one and brought it with her. And I had the little hoop, but, you know, the whole um, grocery bag finish on the back. Mm -hmm. um, this was the one I did. And please don't take too close a look at it. But they don't all go the same direction, my exes. <laughs> in fact, I was silly. I don't know if this is all they had, but I picked up 18 count or Hardanger. I'm not sure which. This might even be 22 count. Um, but it was really small, and that was the first one I did. But you can tell it's a bear, and you can tell it's a duck. So I got pretty good. And then I did these. On the larger count, I didn't go both directions with it. I think part of it was we were stitching in the car. I was. Mm. So that made it tough. But anyway, these were what were up Cute. in her nursery along with her little sampler. Mm -hmm. They were fun. Yeah. But I found them because I'm doing the craft room. 
cleaning it out. And these were all in the same bin. Who knows what you're going to find. And then these were some that I did a little after that. Um, I was doing them as gifts for my mom, just as a holiday thing. This was a spring gift. This tree was a cricket, cross-eyed cricket tree, and I made it into a spring tree mm -hmm. and just put some buttons on it from um, Mill Hill and then did this for her birthday. My mom likes bunnies, if you can't see the connection there between <laughs> the spring stuff. But and, and it's Ada, even though I was stitching on linen at the time, I liked the fact that I could just pick up any fabric I wanted and... I had this in white, so anyway. That looks really cute with the I, buttons on it. Thank you. I dug all that out of the uh, the bin, the craft room. Nice. So, yeah, it was fun. Nice. Um, thank you to everyone who let us know that that picture that Liz showed <laughs> of the, the little, little boy, boy stitching, uh, that that was a Pokemon figure. Yep. Um, I, I still don't know what a Pokemon is, though. It's a game. Oh, it's a game. And it became popular in, um, like, a video game. Oh. Pokemon. Okay. Okay, because Cynthia, she was like, she said, that's not a bunny. <laughs> and she knew her stuff. She said, it's Pokemon, and it's from Generation 1. And it's, is it called Eevee? E-E-V-E-E. -E -E. Okay. And she said, it's actually a fox. And you had said you thought it looked like a fox. Yeah. Um, I thought it looked like a rabbit, a fox, and a squirrel all together. It um, did have a bushy, bushy tail, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But she said there's many versions and multiple generations. And if you Google it, anyway, she knew her stuff. <laughs> So, oh, they have. Like, but I still didn't know. It was it a TV show? Was yeah. it a game? I wasn't sure what a Pokemon was. And you so. can get collector cards. Oh. Uh, oh, it's just like any. It's like um, Mario Brothers from back in the day, Nintendo, and, and and then that migrated into the current game platforms. And Pokemon's kind of like that. It came from a long time ago, and it migrated through all the different types of games. Okay. Cool. All game right. Boy. That was popular, too. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, also, um, let me think here. Uh, okay. Laura Green, she wanted to know, when we were also talking about stitches laying flat, she said, what about a laying tool, and mm -hmm. do you really need one? Yeah, laying tools are awesome. Uh, we actually... Did, that was Gadget Corner. We yep. did laying tools um, as Gadget Corner. I forget what video that was, but they help a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're patient enough to get up, go grab it. <laughs> well, and it's a, it's also a, a habit you develop if that's the style you mm. want to do. And and somebody had uh, left a comment to uh, about that same issue um, about the threads that twisted that you had pointed mm -hmm. out. Um, and a trolley is something else you can use, which is a laying tool, but it's made to sit on your finger. And that's what I like to use. That way I can use both hands and I'm not holding the laying tool in my left hand or my right hand and juggling it back and forth. Yeah. And you can also railroad. So yeah. there's lots of ways to correct it if your mm -hmm. stitches twist. Mm -hmm. And Vana has a video um, of how she stitches. And she has a technique she uses that you do not twist your thread when you when you roll your needle through mm. because you pass it straight up and pass it straight back. Oh yeah. You showed me that. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yes. there are other methods to stitch yeah. too. If you're, if yeah. you are interested in having right. those threads lay side by side, um, there's yeah. a handful of ways to, yeah. to work on it. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Um, Mary, uh, she wanted to know if when we show our band samplers, are they just from our guild? She, she thought it was just a guild thing. It's yeah. not. It, it is our guild's stitch along, but anyone can. Yeah, it's from iStitch Designs mm -hmm. on the internet, and those patterns are available. Um, right, and they'll send you every Friday. They'll send you the newest, um, you know, few lines that you have to do, and yeah. different places. I guess have the banner. We say every video we got ours at Sassy Jack Stitchery. Um, so, but yeah. yes, anybody, anyone can, can stitch that, mm -hmm. that design. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you get the back ones if you were to get involved now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's only week seven and eight. So if you got involved now, there's 52 weeks coming. So, right. Or does, is it no, shorter? This it's is, not a full year, no, right? No, no, no. Mm -mm. Why am I thinking 28? 28. Okay. I was, For some reason that sticks in my head. Okay. So, Half a year. Yeah. 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 Um, this was really cute. Susan Stewart, she said that um, she loves our videos, but she said, I have a concern. 
She said, I think you should have a bank account warning bell every time you show a pattern. <laughs> she, I guess we're enabling her and it's not good on her pocketbook. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was so cute, though. That was a cute comment. Um, very sweet. Thank you. Um, real quick, we also wanted to just uh, send, our, send condolences. our condolences and just big hugs to Yvonne Night Owl Stitcher. Uh, yes. Just you are in our thoughts and prayers. We love you. And... We're so sorry for what happened. Yes. Yes. Well, we've got current work. Somebody does. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> and take it away, Deb. <laughs> All right. She said, do you have your band sampler with you? I said, nope. Mm -mm. You nope. little stinker. Nope, not bringing that here. Shame, she shame, shame. purposefully shame. left that yes, behind. I am a shameful stitcher this week. Oh, I am, that's all right. I was working on peyote all week, and um, and I have not, at least with the time I had available well, to stitch. stitching. It is, but yeah. it wasn't done, it, there was nothing to show. I'll put it that way. <laughs> There's nothing I was going to show you, let's okay. put it that way. All right, so again, we'll show the progress in the band sampler, and let's see, I think it was from here down this list yeah this and, and I've worked ahead I'm down here somewhere <laughs> <laughs> you have ESP you just know what's coming <laughs> well, I did it designed it myself <laughs> all right so I got that up to date Liz did not because <laughs> <laughs> no, I worked ahead <laughs> Oh, let me put this behind here just in case. Uh, Knee High by the 4th of July by Kathy Haberman. This is the pattern. And I did get some more work done on that. I am stitching it on 25 count vintage country mocha and it's over one. This is what I have accomplished so far. Yeah, remember with the lighting, we don't even need that anymore. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Nope, it's perfect. Okay. Beautiful. All right. You can see through it, though, a little bit. Look, can you see Liz? Can you find her? Where'd she go? <laughs> <laughs> There's she um, <laughs> Where'd you go? I decided to change, when I did the corn stalk over here, um, my corn is uh, French knots. And I also put tassels on the top of each corn, just with random straight stitches, and at the very top. I did not stitch that the way the pattern calls for it. You played I with also, it. Yeah, I did play with it. Um, when I did my tassels on top of the corn, like on top of the corn stalk and then on top of each individual corn, Your I corn. used um, toasted barley and apple cider, and they are both gentle art. So those are also part of my stalk. And I did not put windows in my barn. Um, here so that's different and I also used I think it was coal um, in here in the uh, the large opening of the barn so that's coming along I decided to stop working on this for right now because this will be a piece I take would you stop it I was just thinking you said you stopped working on it because you couldn't think of anything else to change <laughs> oh no no I can always come up with something to change <laughs> you need a moment to regroup <laughs> no but I want this will be a good one to take on the plane I think because it's easy to see and there's not tons of color. Right. And it's not huge. Right. So I have to come up with some other ones because I tend to pick really large patterns. I can't take these things with me. Or lots of color yeah. changes. And, yeah. you know, depending on who's sitting next to me, I'd be like, excuse me, Kara, can you hold this? <laughs> Do you know when I flew back from my brother's funeral, I had trouble. I, I put my stitching away. I thought I could stitch. I could bead, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that. But uh -uh. the turbulence, I could not get the hole. And, but you could bead. I could. The tray, the bead laying on the That's tray crazy. on the mat and putting my needle in was fine. But trying to get the hole wasn't. I, wow. It was really strange. Hmm, cool. All right. So I am working on that. You want to finish your current work? Sure. Okay. Yes. And that was our bell for our subscriber tribute. We'll come back to that in a minute. Yes, we will. Let me just get rid of it so it doesn't go off again. Because <laughs> I've been known to do that. All right. So what else am I working on? I got some more work done on my scenic farm um, dimensions, the dimensions kit. Um, so I was able to get more of the wall built over here. The 
Now now why is that funny? Now you're masonry. Yes, <laughs> I actually Mason. am. Doing Just ignore masonry. her. <laughs> <laughs> She's building a wall. What, what's that? I'm a woman of many talents. Yes, <laughs> you are. Yeah. Yes, that uh -huh. is true. It's getting deep in here. Okay, I was able to, yes, build my wall, Liz. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, what did I do? I filled in the background of the sky over here. I added the snow and the grass, little grassy things down there. Um, so I was able to get more work accomplished on that. That is so pretty. I love it. It is. Very pretty. Yeah, I love that one. And still nothing? Okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> I put another <laughs> pattern on my floor stand. I think I had told you a couple weeks ago I was going to put away my Farms of Hawk Run Hollow because I just wasn't feeling it. And you know how you just have to be in it if you want to stitch it? you got to be in it to stitch it. Oh, there you go. Well, I wasn't feeling it. Got to connect. Yeah. So, but I wanted to show you what I had done before I put it away. So this was the first block that I was working on. Um, I changed my, what are they? Blackbirds? Sunflowers? Oh, yeah. I can't see what you're pointing at. Crows. That. Yeah. <laughs> the bird. Yeah. Bird. Um, I changed those over one because I didn't want them that huge. And then in my sunflowers, I did French knots uh, in the center of those. Flower. Yeah. And I was just starting on my cows up there. So, I mean, I still love the piece. I just, I'll definitely pick it back up. But, um, just not right now. Yeah. And this is 32 count flax and it's Belfast linen. That's what that is. Very nice to work on. So, I'm going to set that aside for a little bit until the spirit moves me to get that back out. Or throw it down on the ground. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I'll be back. <laughs> Oops. Hello. <laughs> so, Hi. When'd you get um, then I was in the craft room and I was looking at patterns and this one just jumped out at me and man, it was like, stitch me, stitch me. So it's a Rosewood Manor pattern. It's called Parchment Tapestry. It is so beautiful. And I already had all the floss for it and I the fabric. The yeah, me too. So of course I just wanted to get it out immediately. And I did. Um, kind of long. Sorry, Liz, watch out. <laughs> Bam. This is what I have um, accomplished so far. And I am using straight stitches instead of cross stitches for all of the border that'll go around the motifs. So I got that worked on. I think that was all I did. That was well, it. Ill. I actually had some things I pulled oh, out that aren't. Should we do our subscriber tribute winners? Sure. Since you're going to interrupt me every time. Since you have she... nothing to show. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, <laughs> thank you for being subscribers. And we want to say a special thank you to Linda Midcap. You will be receiving a Lizzie Kate pattern called Faith, Hope, and Love. In the drop down section of our videos, you will find e our emails and also my Instagram. So just get a hold of us and send us your mailing address, address and we will get your goodies off to you. And also, Joyce Kelly. You'll be receiving a hillside samplings. Just kidding. <laughs> you can't see. Um, sampler sewing basket. That's cute. Yeah, very pretty. Are those all like little needlework? Not pretty. Um, motifs. Like oh. I saw a spool. Is that what those are? You mean back here? Oh, okay. No, I saw the spool of thread oh, there, oh, but oh, it's yeah. a strawberry here yeah. and there. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure what those other emblems very were. Pretty. Yes. It is. So thank you, Joyce Kelly. Yes, thank you and very Linda, much. And Linda, get a hold of us, and we'll get that out to you. Yes. Okay, now you may go. Thank you. <laughs> You've seen this. Deb stitched hers long before I got mine out. Um, but it's from Weyenberg, and it's a German designer, and it's a beautiful sampler mm -hmm. called Quaker Autumn. And... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. I was it's actually the Autumn thing. Forest Quaker. And it's all DMC. And that is going to be for my son. So I pulled that out. I'm going to get that on my Wait, large was frame. I calling it the wrong thing? Yes. Or was I right? oh. It's Autumn Forest Quaker. <laughs> you called it Woodland all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Woodland sampler. <laughs> it's a Woodland Quaker sampler. It's a Quaker Woodland sampler. That was close. And this is a cute little um, pattern. Um, it was by Val's stuff, and it was kitted uh, by our shop at Stitches Unlimited. And I had the bunny ears, and, 
and face started on this uh, gingham. It actually was done on a piece of stamped fabric with dots, but the one that they did it on um, was a little different color, right? Wasn't it a little darker? Because it didn't stand out on this, right? There was a reason we did it on the pink. I can't remember what that was. I like that but, pink gingham. Yeah, I think that's what we just... I switched it over to pink. It was supposed to be on this. And I thought it just got a little lost, the white bunny on the cream. So I switched mm. it. So anyway, cool. you can still see the nose. And so I just pulled that up as a small to work on right now. And then this is actually... Everybody's working on samplers. And I've had this one. I think it is the most unusual sampler that I have probably. Um, it's a commemorative sampler from um, Jean Farish from our retreat. And it was from 1996 Spirit of Cross Stitch Festival. And I found this online. I did not buy it at the time. And then years went by and Mom and I and Mick were just kind of talking about our retreat and we were remembering the the sampler and I thought, man, I wish I would have gotten that. I, I got a mouse pad with it on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do? Imagine yeah. that, right? Yeah. So, and I had the, the original uh, poster that had it on it framed in my stitching room just as a reminder of the retreat my mom and sister and I went on. So when I found it, I decided to get it. It was on eBay. And hmm. I did do, this is the first one that I put the easy count grid on. <laughs> what happens if I pull one of those out? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem. So it hey, started and I decided it would be fun to, to finish up. Yeah. And it has a lot of specialty stitches in it. Oh, nice. Yeah, all of those bands are different, different I stitches. I love the saying. It says, threads through time connect all generations of needle workers. We learned our art from the from those who came before us. Today we teach and preserve for the ones who follow us. That's very pretty. And the colors are pretty. Yeah. Um, and it was done in flower thread. Um, so, oh. well, actually, I'm not sure. I should check. I think I changed There's it There's not many over. colors. Yeah. I think I changed it over. Hmm, very cute. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, they did do it originally in flower thread. Wow. Um, they do have the DMC there as an option too, also. So one strand? You just <laughs> yes, one flower strand? thread, okay. just one strand of flower thread. Nice. Yep. And so I like the look that it gives. But that was a chore, I'll tell you, trying to find the flower thread today now that they don't make it anymore. Yeah. Because um, I got this, oh, right before I moved back here. Okay. Uh, nice. So about 2010. That neighborhood. Sweet. So anyway, that's what I pulled out to work on. Okay. Have some fun. And I did have a couple finished items I wanted to show. Oh yeah. Did you have you have some stuff there too? What do you? Oh well, I just when you talked about what you might be working on, um, uh -huh. I just wanted to to show this. Um, we received something from a um, a we floss have... tube friend. Yes. And overseas, and I just wanted to show it because it's beautiful. Um, she thought of me, and I think the reason why she thought of me with this is because of my other Jacobean piece that I did. Is it Jacobean or Jacobian? I used to pronounce it the other way, but I've heard it both. Okay. Well, this is the, the book that has the, the design and the chart in it, and then she sent me the threads to go with it, and this is cruel work. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the fabric, and it's printed on, you know, the design is printed on the fabric. So I'm excited about starting that because that'll be a challenge for me and different. Um, it'll, be, it'll be beautiful. It's a heavier it, weave, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, very. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And if, if you wanted to see this again, I showed this a long time ago when I had finished it, but I had done this bell pool um, in the Jacobean or however you want to say it, print. Um, I that, think that's accurate. That was a lot, a lot of fun. It's just so beautiful. I love, I love that kind of design. Mm -hmm. So... I wanted to say thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Liz. And her, her channel is a stitchy bug, so she's really, yeah, she really sweet and fun to watch. Visit her. Um, <clears throat> but this is this is going to definitely be fun and a challenge. That's for sure. And this book is awesome. Very detailed. 
you know, tells you what stitches, but they have they have so much history also in here to read about. We'd never heard of Penelope before. Yeah. And so um, Gosh, when beautiful. Deb got that in the mail, I looked it up. So pretty. And she has, um, she's very popular overseas, evidently. Wow. Very, uh, all of her patterns are published like yeah. this. Um, that is so pretty. Oh my gosh. Publication format of page after page after page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also an interesting read too. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm excited to get that started. And I just want to quick show this. This is very unusual. I know. Um, Liz found this in a, a boutique shop, she said. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a book and I did show it when I showed my great, great, great grandmother's Hardanger piece. Remember that? That uh, I showed a while back. The book? No, no. The piece that I showed. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time, I had a little book that was with that in my grandmother's stash that I think goes back to when it was stitched. Aww. I think it was the book she used. And it is by also by Teresa Dilmont, um, and she's connected to DMC. So this is one of the, I believe, the initial founders of DMC. And the inside jacket is all DMC logo at the time. Um, and there is no um, copyright date or press date in here for me to know how old this book is. This book is awesome. But now. it goes back to the same time period as that publication that was with my grandmother's things. Just incredible. And the information ranges, it's called the Encyclopedia of Needlework. It ranges from um, cross stitch to macrame, tatting, uh, virtually anything you would yeah. do with thread or uh, fibers yeah. is in here. And it, and she said, don't be afraid to look at it. That's what books are for. She said, I know it's old. Yeah, but she that's said awesome. I, she said, I just found it. It was really informative, and it is. Yeah. It's, and the pictures are, are really, mm -hmm. really pretty. So I, I found the section on cross-stitch when I got it, and it's got a nice little section in there. So you might be hearing some things from here <laughs> in the future. <laughs> That's what those are good for. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so I tried finishes. to work on my um, my needle point also the other day. Did there, you? Yeah, there's a stitch on there that's just kicking my butt. Mm. But but because I yeah <laughs> yeah so I was watching um, Caroline um, and she has a piece off the grid off the needle, grid yeah right? off the grid yeah. needleworks. She has a piece that she's showing a counted canvas piece. It's gorgeous. It's okay. Beautiful. And then I had my little one. I'm like, oh my God, I can't even finish it. <laughs> you know, the piece she was doing that when I first started watching her was when she first started. Okay. And um, so I've watched all the pieces and I've watched her, her um, channel change. It's been a lot of fun. But the tiramisu piece that she's doing, mm -hmm. um, I love that. That's I love pretty. the colors yeah. in there. Yeah. Absolutely love yeah. them. And we yeah. have, of course, the ornaments all around piece that we're working on, but I've not, I've not bought one of those dessert series. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that says tiramisu. Yes, please. Um, I had a couple spring finishes I pulled out. Um, this one is by Seika and Company. It's their watercolors patterns. And I had seen the eggs. And each egg, if you're familiar with these, you'll know does different stitches or has different stitches in it and then a different color pattern. And these are all done with, um, I think they're pearl cotton flosses. Um, and watercolor. It's a mix. The pearl is the more of the solid and then the watercolors are mixed in by um, Karen. And then um, I must have had say a dozen of these different patterns from the bird houses to the Santas and the <laughs> snowmen. Uh, I think they're fun. They're very quick to stitch. But that's the first one I put into a pillow. Neat. Um, then we had this with when we did our video on the pin cushions, mm -hmm. but um, it got kind of set in the background and I forgot to show it. It's by Just Another Button Company and it was out at springtime when we went to um, our retreat in Oklahoma. We went to Camp Wanaso with Silver Needle and I bought this there because I just thought it was cute. It was finished a little differently. I put mine behind uh, glass and framed it, but the one they did on this gingham um, it was done on like a block, uh, if I remember right. Remember, it was standing mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. in an easel, and it was uh, frayed around the edges like that. And I thought, well, I could put that in a little frame. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Thank you. 
But this one is the one I like when I pull it out. I love the I Quaker too. pieces. I do too. And I did change one thing in this. The colors are the same, but it's called um, Quaker Egg. <laughs> and it is by Bent Creek. But their pattern has a little chick coming out of half of an egg here in the center above He Is Risen. And I changed it to just be a charm, and I put a cross there, and I left the little chicken egg out. So I did it a little bit differently. But that was, this was fun to stitch because mm -hmm. it, the different motifs, but it wasn't all that big either. Colors are quickie. pretty too. Yeah, I like that. So I like to have that out in springtime. That's fun. All right. We've been spotlighting guilds, mm -hmm. and I have been delighted with the number oh of people. Oh my goodness who have contacted us about joining guilds. Yeah. Um, awesome. And it ranges from chapters uh, with the EGA, which is who we spotlighted last week. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got a, a call and had a chat with my sister-in-law in Arizona, and uh, she found a guild that's with the ANG, the American Needlework Aww. Guild. And um, so we'll probably talk about that guild in a future time. But uh, she's also going to look at one of the EGA chapters nice. out there. Nice. Yeah, she saw the Desert Threads, the one that oh, we yeah. talked about. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's in Phoenix. Okay. So she'll be looking at that, nice. too. Nice. Yeah, she was excited. I am, too. And many of you got in touch saying you were looking. Mm -hmm. um, so we encourage you to do that and to connect. And um, also, if you are in leadership on a guild and you'd mm -hmm. like us to, um, to spotlight your mm -hmm. guild, on an episode let us know yeah. and even if you're a member of a guild and you want us to draw attention to your guild um yeah just, we've been getting some info there too that's yep. great if you would in the email just put spotlight or guild mm -hmm. um and then we'll know that that needs our attention for that yep uh this week our guild is somewhat local mm -hmm. it's down the boardwalk a little bit mm -hmm. it's the loudon guild mm -hmm. And that guild has not just one president, but has co-presidents. And their names are Charlotte DeVere and Brenda Douglas. Mm -hmm. And um, they are located not far from here. Um, and, and the age of the guild, they are 23 years old. They were founded in 1996. Currently, there are about 120 members, um, primarily from Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. They're in Leesburg, which um, we first found out about. Well, there was two ways, actually, we connected with this. The mm -hmm. first connect was that Betsy Morgan um, taught a class mm -hmm. for us at the Delaware Valley Guild, and we met her. And she's with this guild, if I'm not mistaken. And then um, Leela, a friend of ours, who is also in this guild, we met her at the Jamboree. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how... Everybody connects yeah. when you get into this hobby long enough and yeah. you go different places. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. So um, they meet on the second Saturday of each month, mm -hmm. um, which is when we meet. Yeah. And their location is at the VFW Post um, at 401 Old Waterford Road Northwest in Leesburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I might just toss in here that all of this information is available on a blog that they have. Um, and we'll put that blog link in our mm -hmm. um, in our drop down box. Mm -hmm. Their primary focus is on samplers, um, and with the intentional direction of preservation. Yeah, just like just like our guild does. Yeah, they initially started out with um, all things sampler, and then graduated into supporting some of those other <laughs> organizations. Mm -hmm. um, we have. Um, annual dues for them at regular membership $35 and then they have an associate membership um, <laughs> I might say like the Willow Tree Sampler Guild but the Willow Tree Sampler Guild is sort of a seedling of the Loudon Guild because if you saw that episode you know that Willa had been a member of the yeah. Loudon Guild so that's $25 if you're an associate member but their radius is 200 miles mm -hmm. So um, if you're outside of 200 miles, then you can have the associate That was membership. really a neat thing to bring up because I don't think a lot of people realized they could, they could still join a guild and be an associate member without living, you know, close by. Right. So that's awesome. And what that, the benefit of that, and um, I don't know specifically about this guild, um, 
but the benefit of that at some of the guilds is that even though there's distance, uh, Deb and I are now associate members with the guild in Texas, and you still receive their newsletter, mm -hmm. and you receive all the emails and the information about what's going on mm -hmm. and their activities. And if we wanted to, we could attend a retreat. Mm -hmm. um, we could show up at a meeting. <laughs> uh, so um, knock, knock. the connection is there. Um, now, when I was with the EGA in Illinois and I moved to Pennsylvania, um, I made arrangements for them to go ahead and even send me their projects from mm -hmm. their actual meetings so that I could still have something to work on when I was back here. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, annual activities. Over the course of the year, um, the Guild holds workshops with noted designers, lecturers, finishing techniques. Um, they also hold a retreat in August. Um, and I think at Christmas time, they also do a special uh, Christmas. They have a Christmas get-together that's special. Um, we do like our parties and food, don't we? We do, yes. <laughs> um, I didn't mention and food, wanted to. stitching. <laughs> yes, those two things. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Wine. <laughs> there you go. Should we keep going? The two food groups. <laughs> um, Chocolate and wine? <laughs> <laughs> um, they have a membership uh. contact, um, Nancy Stevens, and she's listed on the blog and also is her email address. And we will put that connection also in the drop-down box so yeah. you have it. Yeah, so check them out if you are anywhere in the area or become an associate member. Yes. Okay, wonderful. We are going to do something different now. Um, this kind of came out of a... A situation I have in redoing my craft room. <laughs> will we ever see Liz's craft room? No. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> you will. In in all fairness, my craft room was very functional. It's a Deb, mirage. Deb it's not helped really there. me um, unpack everything that I had in boxes or in baskets, and we put it in bins, and we had it in the closet. And we even got another bookshelf unit from IKEA to go with the ones I had, so we had space. But um, everything that was in the closet, it's a very narrow closet, not mm -hmm. very deep. Yeah. And so we had this idea that we could just stack the bins, and as long as they were labeled, what I did want to get to, I could just move the bins, pull out the one I need, and put them back. In the last three years, but really over the last five years, um, my back's gotten to the point where I can't do that anymore. I can't take the bins out, turn around, set them down, and get back in. And so it's really, it's cramping my style. <laughs> it really is. And so I've come up with little halfway fixes, um, pulling things out, putting them somewhere else in the craft room. But then I don't have room in the craft room to mm -hmm. move anything around or to have mm -hmm. an extra person sitting in there with me. So I finally gave up. We just need to knock down a wall. Yes. But that would eliminate the bathroom or the bedroom. Who needs that? <laughs> no, well, good. we have both upstairs. We're good. You got a tree yeah. outside. There you go. There's your bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. So you can sleep in the craft room. Yeah, there you go. My mm -hmm. recliner. Done. Um <laughs> well we'll get Matt right on it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey Matt. <laughs> um so what I did was uh a week ago I thought, okay, it's gonna take a while, but I took everything out of the closet and everything out of the craft room and I stacked it along the wall <laughs> in our bedroom. So basically I did eliminate the wall. Yeah. I brought the craft room yeah. into the bedroom. And you eliminated the bedroom. I did. <laughs> So um, what I'm doing is now I'm intentionally putting things back in the space I have that I get to regularly so that it's functional for me. And that's the, that was the rub. Mm -hmm. It wasn't functional. So I wasn't enjoying spending any time in there because it was making my life more difficult physically. So we're on a clean direction of how to set it back up, and hopefully that will come to pass. <laughs> but in the process, I was actually um, working on... And where did it disappear to? I don't know. I don't I was either. just thinking. Oh, my goodness. Where did it go? It's gone. Um, we have... You talk, I'll hunt. All right. I don't no, know what okay. I did with it. I shall um, find it. In the craft room, I uncovered a couple of bins. I won't call them whips anymore because they aren't. They're older than whips. Um, so my sister-in-law and I were talking, and we're going to call them... Uh, we're going to have a program for adoption. She pointed out I need to emancipate the pieces in order to do this. And so we found a project for today. <laughs> it's gone. It left home without us. Um, it's not in the basket? No. Oh, this is too funny. This is weird. It is very weird. Um, 
watch me walk off and set it somewhere else. But anyway, the idea is we're going to emancipate some of these things and in Deb's craft room too, and we're going to share them with you. Um, the, the piece is going to be called stalemates um, because they're not moving at all. And you may make a comment that you would like the like to adopt the piece for the day and then we'll draw a name uh, from the adoption candidates and we'll um, share that project with you if your name is drawn. The one that we're talking about right now is a piece from Primrose. Um, sit down, Deb. I don't know really where. I really have no clue what this you did with that. This is very strange. This is it? very strange. Um, it's a goner. Oh, <laughs> I found it. Are you kidding? Nope, I found it. It was sitting on she the floor. She did that on purpose. I know she did that on purpose. <laughs> I wanted my own air time. <laughs> <laughs> the piece that we have for this week is called <laughs> It's called Courage. It was done through Saturday Stitchers, which is a program that we had down in uh, Illinois with the Guild. It's a little pillow, and I got quite a ways. Yeah, you did. It's not much stitching left. That's it awesome. It was done with silks. Wow. Um, and at the time when I got it, my mother was a breast cancer survivor. And I was going to do it and give it to her. And she's now deceased. So I thought perhaps somebody else um, in their journey might have an interest in this piece and would have a use for it. Yeah. And it might be encouraging to somebody else. The nice part, if you haven't stitched with silk before, this has very nice silk in it. And it's a very simple pattern. There were a few um, specialty stitches. So if you stitched any of um, uh, Periwinkle Promise's pieces... Um, You'll like this. Very cool. So, just put so just put adoption, adoption as a comment, mm -hmm. and or in the comment, and we'll draw a name next week. That's really cool. And you might be uh, the new foster parents of this project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very sweet. I can't believe you had it over there all that time. I can't. Well, you know what I did? I moved the big pieces aside, and I didn't see that tiny little one uh -huh. over there. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> You're sticking to it. All right. Well, <laughs> Gadget Corner is what we have um, to look at now. And this one is sort of a homemade gadget again. I couldn't believe that this hasn't made it onto the video yet. But it's probably because I haven't been doing any hard anger uh, since we started. And it's a way to deal with your spools of pearl cotton. Um, all of us who have done hard anger or any kind of counted pulled thread uh, may have used some of these spools. Anchor makes them, DMC makes them. And Deb and I saw that a lot of these when we were up at Nordic Needle. Mm -hmm. And our guild in Illinois, you're going to hear a lot from guilds. That's the thing about a guild is that you get this collective knowledge. Yeah. And it's so much fun because people are doing all kinds of different things mm -hmm. and you learn about it. Um I was sitting there one day and I saw somebody with a whole bunch of these little um, gumball machines. I was going to say, don't you get those a canisters? Little, little toy. Prize. Yeah, a little prize and stuff. Yep, you do. Mm -hmm. And um, most of them are 25 cents to 50 cents a piece now. Mm -hmm. So you figure your gadget's going to cost you 50 cents, okay? <laughs> That's just all there is to it. Unless you can find the distributor of these and you do a lot of hard anger and then you might make a bigger investment. <laughs> but the idea is. You get your your handy person with a drill, the smallest drill bit they have, and you put a little tiny hole in the bottom. Now, I tried using the center hole where it's injected, but it actually gets a little too big. It kind of frays because it's got a an extra plug there. Um, the ones that, for me, I like are, um, this is the one where it was done right in the center. You can see it's kind of oversized there. Comes out a little too fast. If you do it a little off center, like this one, and a tiny little hole, then it, then it just fits the thread. And you thread your thread from the inside out. It sits on that lid, and this literally just comes right out yeah. of the spool. It's really sweet. It is. It's very nice. So you don't have to chase your tail end anymore in the <laughs> yeah. box or the bin or wherever you keep your spools. And I just put a little knot uh, with a little pass-through loop. Um, on the end so it doesn't fall back inside the container. Mm -hmm. That's all that's about. So that's one way to do it. Now that's the um, hack method mm -hmm. for using the little toy prizes. So you could throw that in your project 
bags and you don't have to worry about these these coming unraveled nope that's nice now the other one is the same idea and it's a knitter's gadget um, I also saw it in with tatting uh, they use it for the tatting spools too um, they're little socks made out of this plastic uh, netting and I will look up the actual name for these and put it in the drop-down box but um, these I did not create they make them much larger for your skeins of yarn and you just put your your spool in there and then that wraps your thread and then you just pull your thread out the same way you do in one of these little plastic containers. I wonder if you could use a little bit of pantyhose. Hmm? I don't know. I guess it would be That's worth cool. a try. That's pretty cool. Um, I like it because it, it doesn't snap. I, I am not a pantyhose person. I worked for oh, over 20 years before I was disabled, and every day that was the worst part of my day. I don't care how bad my day got. If I had to have pantyhose on, that was a bad day. I I took on pantsuits uh, yeah. just to avoid yeah. the pantyhose. I hate them. I, I hate the way they feel on my hands. I can't even buy those microfiber dishcloths. No? No. Mm -mm, they feel way too much like those. Mm. Oh, <laughs> it's making my hair stand up just thinking about it. But anyway, That's funny. so Gadget Corner today, take your grandson <laughs> or your kids out, let yeah. them put 50 cents in the machine yeah. and get a, uh, I don't know, a decoder ring or something <laughs> and then uh, get a drill prize. a hole in it. Yeah. Yep. And it is. It's my, I have almost, I have one of these for almost every one of my yeah. little spools that and I have. And it's just so sweet because you see the color right through there. It's awesome. Yep. Great idea. Wonderful. So um, that brings us to a conclusion on today's episode for Country Stitchers. <laughs> um, we would like to um, just also let people know that we do appreciate um, the time mm -hmm. that viewers take to um, express their appreciation for our channel and mm -hmm. the information we pass on and the the time that we spend mm -hmm. um, with them and whether it's in the form of a card or an email or a letter mm -hmm. or package in the mail, it doesn't matter. We really do appreciate yeah. the feedback. So thank you to anybody yes, thank that's you been so much. communicating with us. Mm -hmm. And we also would like to say thank you to the rest of the floss tube community mm -hmm. and to local needle workshops, believe, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. those, <laughs> uh, and everybody who helps to make this craft yes. as much fun as it is. Uh, online shops, everyone. Thank you. And remember, share, share the, the joy of needlework. needlework. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye.